So in this video, we will recap the most important tax accounting issues. Once we go through the accounting adjustments, we will see that whenever we make a change to the value of an asset or liability on our balance sheet as part of these adjustments, we will see that we will also recognize uh, associated changes in our deferred tax assets and deferred tax liabilities. Uh, so the purpose of uh, these slides is to show you again why we make these changes and what is the reason why we have these deferred tax assets and deferred tax liabilities. So all of this arises because of differences between accounting and taxable profit. So accounting profit is the profit or loss that we have over, let's say, a year. But this accounting profit is determined in line with IFRS. So it's determined in line with the accounting standards and the conceptual framework as set by the IASB. Which is different from taxable profit, which can be different for companies in different countries, because it's the profit that is determined by the local tax authorities. And it's not determined by IFRS standards or the IFRS conceptual framework. It's purely determined in line with the rules established by the local tax authorities. And of course, these two can be different. Uh, the goal of IFRS is to provide information to, for example, investors, whereas the goal for the tax authorities will be something completely different. That would be having a fair tax collection system. So there are different guidelines then in terms of how we record profit under IFRS and how we record profit under the tax rules. And I said these two are, are different. So because of that, accounting profit and taxable profit are going to be different. That also means then that the tax expense that we report under IFRS is likely going to be different from the taxes that we have to pay to the tax authorities in a year. And that's what you will see here on this slide as well. So it's the accounting profit that is going to determine the income tax expense that we want to recognize. Based on the IFRS rules, we end up with a certain level of accounting profit and on that profit, we are going to recognize tax expense. I said the tax rules can be completely different. So the taxable profit can be completely different from the accounting profit. But it's going to be the taxable profit determined via the tax rules that is going to determine how much tax a company is going to pay in a given year. So it's the taxable profit that is going to determine the current income tax payable. So how much a company has to pay in tax in a given year. So as I said, those two can be different. Accounting profit is going to be different from taxable profit. And because of that, the income tax expense that we want to record under the accounting profit is also different from the tax payable that is determined under the tax rules. And that's where accounting for income taxes arises from. We have these differences in accounting profit and taxable profit. Because of that, we have differences in income tax expense under IFRS and taxes that we have to pay under the tax rules. And what we will do via accounting for income taxes is identify the reasons for why these two are different and then account for those uh, differences. So we will look at the differences between accounting profit and taxable profit. We look at what is the underlying cause of these differences and we account then for the current and future differences between those two. And there can be two sources of differences. Uh, one is permanent, meaning that it will never reverse. There is going to be a permanent difference in what we recognize under accounting, so under IFRS, and what we recognize under the tax statements. So permanent differences relate to either revenue or expense items that are reported under IFRS, for example, but that will never be reported in our tax statements. 
or the opposite. So we can also have some revenue and expense items that are included in our tax statements, but that will never be included under IFRS. Which means that these differences are permanent. It's included in one statement, but it will never be included in the other statement. Meaning it's permanent and it will never reverse in a later accounting period. And you can see some differences here or some examples of these differences. For example, we can have non-deductible expenses. So maybe the company is getting a fine from the government and this will be an expense under IFRS. Uh, the company has to pay this fine, money is flowing out of the company, so the payment of this will be reflected as expense under IFRS. But in many cases, the company is not allowed to use this fine as a tax deductible expense. Uh, so this entire payment for this fine is not showing up as an expense in our taxable income. And it will never be showing up, meaning it's a permanent difference. We have this expense under IFRS, but we don't have the expense in our tax statements. And you can also have the opposite where we have some non-taxable income or revenues that um, will show up as revenue or income under IFRS. We get some money, uh, we get maybe a government subsidy, and we recognize this as income under IFRS. But maybe then this is also not taxable in our taxable income. Uh, the government is giving us some money because they maybe want to incentivize us to open a local branch. And because of that, we get the subsidy and we don't have to pay tax on this subsidy. So this would also be a permanent difference in which we recognize the subsidy as income or revenue under IFRS, but we're not going to recognize this as income or revenue on our tax statements. And again, this would be a permanent difference. It's recognized under IFRS but it will never be recognized in our tax statements. Then the second source of differences are temporary differences. And in this case, over the entire lifetime, we will recognize the same amounts under IFRS and under the tax rules. However, the point in time in which we recognize things are different. So, there are differences between accounting profit and taxable profit, and these differences originate in one or more years, and they reverse in later years. So if you look at all the years combined, we recognize the same amount, but we recognize something, let's say, earlier under IFRS compared to when we recognize it in the tax statements, or we recognize something later under IFRS uh, then we recognize it in our tax statements. And you will see some examples of temporary differences here. So in some cases we use the accrual basis of accounting for IFRS, but we will use the cash basis of accounting uh, for taxable income. And of course then the point in time in which we recognize things can be different. Um, that's why we can recognize revenues even though customers haven't paid us yet we still recognize the revenue uh, and we recognize the associated accounts receivable. But if you use cash basis of accounting, you will only recognize the revenues once you've actually received the cash. So this would be an example of a temporary difference. Overall, we recognize the same amount. Only under IFRS, we recognize it when we make the sale but for tax purposes, we recognize it only when we receive the cash. And we can also have differences when it comes to, for example, expenses. So in many cases, there will be differences in the depreciation rates that we use under IFRS and the depreciation rates that we use in our tax statements. And for example, we can have accelerated depreciation from our tax statements. Again, overall, we will recognize the same amount of depreciation. So if we look at the lifetime of, for example, the machine, we still recognize the same amount of depreciation. Only the amounts of depreciation that we recognize in each of the years can be different in IFRS versus our tax statements. So then what does it mean for the tax expense 
because I said the tax expense is going to be different from the amount that we have to pay to the tax authorities. And that's what you will see here. So our total tax expense actually consists out of two components. And the first component is the current tax expense. And this is actually equal to the current tax payable. So the current tax expense is based on taxable income as determined by the rules of the tax authorities. And that's also then determining the amount that we currently have to pay or maybe receive in cash from or to the tax authorities. So I said, but under IFRS, we want to recognize tax expense not based on the tax rules, but based on IFRS. And that's where the second component kicks in, this deferred tax expense. And that one actually recognizes the future tax consequences of these differences. So we have differences, for example, in depreciation rates, which lead to differences in tax income and IFRS income now, but also in future periods then. Because as I said before, if the difference originates in one year, it has to reverse in one of the future years. And that's what we will recognize via this deferred tax expense. We have these differences. These also lead to future tax consequences. And we will recognize that now. So the deferred tax expense then basically reflects the taxes that are going to be paid or saved in future periods. So the ultimate goal of that then would be to more or less match the tax payment to the tax authorities to the appropriate period in terms of expenses. So whenever we have temporary differences, I said because maybe we use the accrual basis for IFRS, but the cash basis for tax, or we have different depreciation rates, whenever we have these temporary differences that cause differences between tax income and IFRS income, we will recognize these deferred taxes. And these deferred taxes match the tax payment to the appropriate period in which we want to recognize this payment as expense. And this will lead to two things, one on the balance sheet. So on the balance sheet, we will recognize deferred tax assets and deferred tax liabilities. And these deferred tax assets and deferred tax liabilities basically reflect the differences in the book values of assets and liabilities in IFRS versus the book values of these assets and liabilities in our tax statements. And they reflect that if we have these differences in book values, this will also lead to differences in future taxes that we have to pay. And these deferred taxes on the balance sheet then reflect these differences in the future taxes that we have to pay. And they reflect the cumulative difference in how we treat these assets under IFRS and how we treat these assets under tax purposes. Cumulative meaning if we have a machine for three years and we recognize different depreciation rates under IFRS and under tax, for three years, the DTA and DTL on the balance sheet reflect this cumulative three-year difference, which is not the case for the deferred taxes on the income statement, because that results from yearly changes in the DTA and DTL balances. Um, so we have some differences after three years. The income statement effect would be, what is the incremental difference now that we have, let's say in year four? So the deferred taxes on our income statement, this deferred tax expense, results from yearly changes in our DTA and DTL balances. And basically we add as expense any increase in DTLs because that reflects relatively higher future tax payments. And we also recognize as expense decre decreases in DTAs. And we subtract from that any increases in DTA, DTAs or any decreases in DTLs. Now let's look at an example where we have one company, XYZ, and we have cash sales of 1,000 euros. And as a company, we only have one expense, 
and that is the depreciation on a machine which we bought at the beginning of the year for 1200 euros and we can use this machine for three years and it has no residual value for IFRS purposes we're going to use straight line depreciation which means that in each of the next three years we have pre-tax income that's equal to 600 we have our cash revenue of 1000 and with straight line depreciation and no residual value the depreciation expense in each of the next three years would be the same 400 euros so over the next three years we have 400 euros in depreciation expense 1000 in cash revenue so 600 in pre-tax income for tax purposes things are a bit different because here we have 600 of depreciation in year one 600 of depreciation in year two and nothing anymore in year three because as I said over the lifetime of the machine we have to recognize the same amount of depreciation 1200 euros only under IFRS it will be 400 in each of the next three years but for tax it's 600 600 and zero the tax rate is 30 percent so the question would be what is the tax expense and tax payable in each of the next three years so in year one our taxable income so income determined according to the tax rules is 400 euros the 1000 cash sales and for tax purposes we have 600 of depreciation which means that the current tax expense which is also the amount that we currently have to pay to the tax authorities is 30 percent the tax rate of this taxable income of 400 euros so 120. now to calculate the deferred tax expense we need to know the difference in the book value of this machine under ifrs and the book value of this machine under the tax rules so under ifrs we had 400 of depreciation which means that at the end of year one the book value of this machine under IFRS is 800. We paid 1200, we have one year of depreciation of 400. So after year one, the book value of this machine is 800 in IFRS. For tax purposes, as we've seen in the beginning, the depreciation was 600. So after one year, for tax purposes, the book value is now 600 which means that in our tax statements the book value of the machine is lower 600 compared to 800. now what does it mean for future tax expenses or for future taxes payable this means that over the next two years under ifrs we can still recognize 800 in depreciation expenses but it's not the case that we also have 800 in future tax deductible expenses because for tax purposes we already recognized 600 of depreciation in year one and the 600 book value that we have at the end of year one reflects that over the next two years we will only have 600 of tax deductible depreciation expenses so under IFRS over the next two years we will recognize 800 in depreciation expenses but for tax purposes, we can only deduct another 600 of future depreciation expenses. And that's what we will recognize under this DTL and under the deferred tax expense. So we will recognize a deferred tax liability that is equal to 30% of this difference. Uh, book value of the machine under IFRS is 800 book value of the machine on for tax purposes is 600 so the temporary difference here would be 200 30 percent of that is 60 and that's the deferred tax liability that we will recognize on the balance sheet and as i said this reflects the compared to ifrs relatively lower future tax deductions under ifrs we have 800 of depreciation over the next two years but for tax purposes, this is, this is only going to be 600. So that's the DTL on the balance sheet. Um, this was year one. So the beginning of the year DTL was zero. 
So the deferred tax expense in this case would be 60. The DTL was zero at the beginning of the year and after year one, it's 60. So the increase in the deferred tax liability is 60. And the combination of the current tax expense that's calculated in accordance with the tax rules and this deferred tax expense, that will be the total tax expense that we report under IFRS. Current tax expense, 120, deferred tax expense, 60. So the combination of the two is 180. So the total tax expense that we report in year one is 180, which you can see is also equal to 30% the tax rate of our pre-tax IFRS income of 600. And that's also what we want to do. So what we've done now is by recognizing these deferred tax assets and liabilities, we are making sure that the tax expense that we report under IFRS is actually reflective of whatever we do under IFRS. So the 180 tax expense reflects the straight line three year depreciation that we have under IFRS. So what we will have is we have a tax expense of 180 in the income statement, which consists of 120 that we have to pay now based on the tax rules and a deferred tax expense of 60, which reflects that over the next two years, there will be less tax depreciation. And on the balance sheet, we will have a DTL of 60 and we will have taxes payable uh, of 120 reflecting this current tax expense. And we can continue with year two where taxable income is again 400. We again have another year of 600 in depreciation expenses and the taxes payable are again 120. And again, we need to look at the difference in the book value of the machine under IFRS and under the tax rules. So under IFRS, we have 400 left. Acquisition cost of 1200, less two years of 400 in depreciation expenses. However, for tax purposes, we're done. Uh, we bought the machine for 1200. In year one, we had 600 of depreciation and in year two now again. So basically for tax purposes, the machine is completely written off. So the book value of this machine under the tax rules is zero. Which in this case then leads to a temporary difference that now has increased from the 200 that we had at the end of year one to 400 now. Book value of this machine under tax is zero. Book value of the machine under IFRS is 400. So the temporary difference is 400. 30% of that is the DTL. So on the balance sheet, we will have 120 as a DTL. And again, this reflects the lower future tax deductions because next year in year three, we will see that there is no tax depreciation anymore because for tax purposes, the machine has been written off, but we will still have 400 in depreciation expenses under IFRS. So basically this DTL again shows the lower future tax deductions that we have related to this machine. On the IFRS, we deduct 400 from our income, but we cannot deduct anything anymore from our taxable income. So at the end of the year, we have this DTL of 120. At the beginning of the year, or at the end of year one, we calculated that it was 60. So the deferred tax expense in this case is 60 again. The increase in DTL from 60 at the end of year one to 120 at the end of year two. And as before, the total tax expense is going to be the combination of the current tax expense and the deferred tax expense. So the 120 plus the 60 increase in our DTL, which is again 180, which is again equal to 30% of our pre-tax IFRS income. So as a short summary, we have a tax expense of 180, which consists of our current tax expense of 120, again calculated in line with the tax rules, and a deferred tax expense of 60.
And on our balance sheet, we now have a DTL of 120. And the taxes we have to pay, taxes payable on our balance sheet are also again 120. So now what happens in year three? So in year three, our taxable income is actually equal to our revenue, 1000. We've already recognized two years of depreciation of 600. So for tax purposes, the machine was fully depreciated. So taxable income in year three is actually equal to a thousand, which also means that the taxes we have to pay are 30% of that. So the taxes that we have to pay in year three are now actually 300. For the deferred tax expense, as before, same in each of these years, we need to look at the differences under IFRS and under the tax rules. And actually at the end of year three, there are no differences anymore. Because now also under IFRS, we've fully depreciated the machine. Because in year three, we had another year of 400 in depreciation expenses. So at the end of year three, the book value of the machine is zero, both under IFRS and in our tax statements. Which also means that we no longer need a DTL on the balance sheet. Uh, because this DTL was reflective of these differences in book values. At the end of the year, these differences are gone because both under IFRS and in our tax statements, the book value is zero. So there is no difference anymore. Which means that at the beginning of the year, we had a DTL of 120. At the end of the year, since there are no differences anymore, the DTL should be zero. So what we are doing is in year three, we're decreasing the DTL from 120 to zero. And this actually reflects a deferred tax benefit that lowers our tax expense. The DTL was 120 in the beginning of the year and it goes to zero at the end of the year. So what you will see then for total tax expense, it consists of the current tax expense, which is the 300 that we have to pay in year three. We had no depreciation anymore in our tax statements. So, that caused our taxable income to be relatively high. And that also caused the tax payment to be relatively high. So that's this 300. But we can add to that the deferred tax expense, which in this case is actually a deferred tax benefit of 120. And if you combine these two, you will see that the total tax expense is again 180 or equal to 30% the tax rate of our 600 IFRS income. So as before, by recognizing these deferred tax effects, we make sure that the tax expense reflects the IFRS depreciation of 400. And you will see that in this case, there are quite some differences. We have a tax expense of 180. However, we have to pay 300 in taxes and we have this deferred tax benefit of 120. But on our balance sheet after year three, we don't see much anymore. There is no DTL anymore because there is no difference anymore in the machine under IFRS and the machine under tax. And the taxes we have to pay, taxes payable on our balance sheet are 300. So what have we done now? So as a quick summary, what we've done now is we've matched the tax payments to the appropriate periods. So if you look at the tax payments, and I said those tax payments were calculated in accordance with the tax rules. Uh, we had relatively high tax depreciation in the first two years, and we had no tax depreciation in year three. And that led to this pattern of tax payments. Uh, because of this high tax depreciation, we paid 120 in year one, we paid 120 in year two, but we had to pay 300 in the third year. However, under IFRS, we had 400 of straight line depreciation in each of these years. So in order to bring our tax expense in line with the 400 of IFRS depreciation, we recognized these deferred tax, uh, tax effects. So that caused us to recognize a tax expense of 180 in each of these three years, which I said is consistent with having the same depreciation of 400 in each of these three years 
which also meant that we had the same pre-tax income of 600 in each of these three years. So basically what we've done is we've looked at these relatively low tax payments in year one and year two, and we added to that some of this higher tax payment in year three to ultimately make sure that the tax expense does not reflect the tax payments, so when we pay it to the tax authority, but that the tax expense reflects the pre-tax IFRS income and the IFRS depreciation expenses. So we've matched the tax payments to the appropriate period. Under IFRS, everything was the same in each of these three years. So we should also have the same tax expense in each of these three years. And we've allocated the tax payments then to the appropriate period. So relative to IFRS, the tax payments were too low in year one and year two, but they were too high in year three. And we've matched that to the appropriate period, such that we had a tax expense of 180 in each of these three years. 